There's no one simple answer. I mean, just in terms of that relationship between religious belief and paranormal beliefs, um, on the one hand, you might expect that uh, if you already believe in life after death, mm -hmm. it's much more, it's much easier to believe in other paranormal phenomena, particularly those that relate to life after death. <laughs> Very good question. Um, again, one of my colleagues here, whom, whom I think you've met, uh, Dr. Gustav Kuhn, uh, his, he is, as well as being a psychologist, is a conjurer, very skilled conjurer. Mm -hmm. um, and he's, his, his line, main line of research interest is trying to figure out why uh, conjuring tricks work, which is, which is absolutely fascinating. I mean, yeah, we, if you look at kind of traditional cognitive psychology, then we're very interested in things like visual illusions, where one line looks as if it's seven percent longer than another line, uh, even though in fact they're the same length. Um, but you know, for centuries, conjurers have been making elephants disappear. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's a, yeah. it's pretty amazing. Um, and so, you know, looking at the kind of techniques that they use and why they work in terms of the psychological mechanisms is is going to tell us a lot about the way the mind works. Um, how, where this overlaps with uh, paranormal belief, of course, is um, if you'll take somebody like, say, Uri Geller, who uh, does what appear to many skeptics to be conjuring tricks, but simply by saying, but these are not conjuring tricks, many people, including myself as a, as a teenager, when Uri Geller first appeared, I was totally taken in. I thought, yeah. wow, he's amazing. He's got all these amazing powers. I so wanted to believe in him. Um, and and now I, again, I know lots of I've got lots of friends who can bend spoons. It looks yeah. exactly the same as the way Uri mm -hmm. Geller does it. And they say, well, if Uri's using psychic powers, he's doing it the hard way. Because if you do it as a trick, it looks yeah. just the same. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it overlaps in that respect, where certainly um, the way that our minds can fool us into thinking that. Uh, we've just witnessed something which, according to conventional science, should be impossible. Um, I mean, I, I love watching conjurers. I mean, it's kind of it's honest deception. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know you're being fooled, but you enjoy the experience. Um, but uh, for some people, if they, you know, they, they would challenge me and say, "Well, if you can't explain how how this is done, you should accept that it's paranormal." Well, no, because I just accept that I, mm -hmm. there are limits on my knowledge about these things. Um, if I have if I know that conjurers can achieve that same effect, and even if they don't tell me the details of the trick, mm -hmm. I'm just going, to, just going to assume it is a trick, yeah. and it could be explained to me, mm -hmm. um, and I'm not going to accept that it's paranormal. What we will need to establish whether or not paranormal phenomena such as psychokinesis are real is to be able to demonstrate it under tightly controlled conditions, mm -hmm. and um, so far that's not happened. Yeah. What, what tends to happen with people who call themselves anomalistic psychologists, including myself, is that we, we focus on uh, trying to explain why people believe in the paranormal. But given that it's quite reasonable to argue that at least some of this is due to the way our brains have evolved and certain biases that affect our, our cognitive system, an interesting question is to say why is it that some people don't believe in the paranormal? Mm -hmm. Um, and also, there's a big tendency to focus on the cognitive biases that are seen to underlie, or be related with, to paranormal belief. But what about any biases on the side of the sceptics? I'm, I'm pretty sure, for example, that um, there are some sceptics who, even if you presented them with really, really compelling, strong evidence in favour of the paranormal, would just refuse to accept it. Mm -hmm. Possibly down to the level of denying the evidence of their own eyes. I mean, we did do some research, but unfortunately, I've got a kind of back catalogue of interesting studies that we did, which I never found the time to get published. Um, and one of them, without going into too much detail, um, was a study which was basically exploring that, that idea of um, presenting people with uh, evidence that, on the face of it, looked as if it did provide quite strong support for a paranormal claim. Um, and what we found was that our, 
the, the skeptics in our in our group in our study um, would be very uncomfortable, and they'd go up to the point of kind of the I don't know the midpoint on our scale in terms of whether they thought that this was evidence of the paranormal. They didn't go beyond that because I guess they still thought there might be some rational explanation, apart from some of them who simply denied that this was evidence at all. That subgroup who were just the hardliners who would not be moved. Uh, and it was interesting that when we then debriefed them and said, well, actually, you know, this, this, is, you know, this is not really evidence of the paranormal. It was all, mm. you know, there was some deception involved in this study. They were very relieved by it when we were testing psychics. Um, you know, they actually passed our tests, carried out under well-controlled conditions. I mean, I'd, I'd be the first to admit that initially that would be quite difficult for me. I'd find it kind of rather embarrassing and not what I expected at all. But I'd like to think that I'd be able to get over that and ultimately think, well, this is really interesting. You know, let's mm, explore yeah. this further. Let's replicate it. Let's figure out how it works. Mm -hmm. I think the main problem for parapsychology, as it has been for so long, is the whole rep replication issue. Um, and I think that the... Um, one of the main things to focus on is something that's been focused on in psychology recently, which is um, the problems that are caused by uh, questionable research practices. Now, we're not talking here about out-and-out -out fraud. I mean, we'd all condemn that. But um, all those little decision points in carrying out a study, collecting the data, analysing the data, where you kind of have decisions to make and you can kind of give yourself the benefit of the doubt. Mm -hmm. um, and so, I mean, yeah, just to give a, a kind of fairly obvious example, um, I mean, I think one of the reasons, for example, that sceptics typically don't replicate alleged paranormal effects, whereas believers sometimes mm -hmm. appear to do so, is that if I carry out a replication of a study by some parapsychologist, I analyse the results the way I said I was going to analyse the results, and if they don't come out as significant, I then stop. Whereas people who believe that the effect must be there somewhere are likely to try reanalyzing mm -hmm. the data. They'll transform mm -hmm. it. Yes, they'll do all those things. Now, again, if I'm doing a, a mainstream psychology study, I may well do that myself. You know, I don't. I mean, it's kind of two standards operating there, but I'll apply the stricter standards when I'm doing parapsychology because basically. I, in a sense, I don't expect to get a significant result. I don't really want one for reasons I, I talked about earlier. There's nothing wrong with post hoc analysis, provided it is clearly labelled and identified as such. So a lot of these problems can be solved by pre-registration of studies. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so that would be a really important step. Um, and yeah, you know, just generally um, being more aware of the effects that this stuff can have, and just just kind of being more honest and open. And there are some, you know, some really interesting initiatives going on currently in that direction. So it'll be interesting to see. I strongly suspect that unless these lessons are really, really taken on, that um, now let's let's assume for a moment whether this is right or wrong that paranormal forces don't exist. I mean, that's a kind of working hypothesis I have. It could be wrong, but let's assume that it's mm -hmm. true. Um, would parapsychologists ever reach a point where they say, yeah. you know what, no, we don't, we don't think there are any paranormal forces anymore. Well, yeah. if they carry on the way they have done for the last 100 years, then they won't reach that point. There'll always be just enough in terms of the occasional positive result that keeps them going. But if they were to embrace this kind of more rigorous way of doing research, perhaps some of them at least would reach the point where they decide this is probably... No, not the best way to spend our time. Let's go and research something else. Very good question again. Um, I think that it's, for me, it's the kind of light it casts on kind of cognitive biases and the way that we think and the way we process information. Like many people, I'm fascinated by... Um, the kind of weird experiences. And I mean, I used to be a believer for, for a long time. I used to believe in all this stuff. Um, and it is something inherently fascinating about it. But 
learning about the ways that your mind can trick you. And this applies to everybody, you know, it's not just believers. The skeptics have biases. We're all, we're all susceptible to hallucinatory experiences under appropriate circumstances. Um, and, and that, I think, is kind of the main lesson about how, how kind of careful we have to be. For most people, um, the, the kind of strongest evidence to convince them of something is it, have they experienced it themselves. I'm not saying I couldn't have a profound near-death experience mm -hmm. and then be talking to you next week saying, no, 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 I was wrong, I was wrong, it's all true, you know. But it wouldn't actually make it true. I mean, to, to decide on that, we need to have really good quality evidence. Yeah. And I just don't think that that's been delivered yet. I'm not one of those people who says there is no evidence in favour of the paranormal. Mm -hmm. I think there is evidence. It's the quality of the evidence that is, is where the debate yeah. lies. Um, and if the parapsychologists can ever get to a point where they can produce really strong evidence in terms of a replicable, robust, demonstrable phenomena, well, I'd have to say, OK, guys. Então é isso, pessoal. Toda semana eu vou publicar vídeos sobre as minhas pesquisas, sobre paranormalidade, ufologia, <coughs> poltergeists, mediunidade. <coughs> aparições de anjos, de demônios, casos que eu pesquisei. Então já siga o canal aqui, Cientista de Chinelo, deixe seu like no vídeo. Senão eu vou puxar seu pé à noite, beleza? Fui!